Hi guys, I'm Woolcroft Hamster and I thought we'd do another little uh, bit of work on our sycamore long bowl today. Now I've already secured this down um, so I won't bring you over for a close up just yet. Um, and what I wanted to say is this is going to be a fairly shallow bowl. Um, so it's not particularly deep at the moment, it will deepen slightly with what we're doing today but it's not going to be a very deep bowl. Um, and what we're going to be using today is this, which is my finishing gouge. Um, it's made by a company called Hans Carlson. They're a very good company, um, and I quite like this particular gouge. Um, and what I think I'll do, I'll bring you a bit closer in and I'll explain a bit more what it is we're going to do. Right then guys, so here's our bowl, um, pretty much as it was from last time, except for this very small light patch here, just because I had a, a quick go at um, doing a bit of smoothing before I started the camera rolling. Now obviously we've still got all the waste wood so it's still screwed down to my bench so it's nice and secure. Obviously as I've said before you can use a vise uh, or other types of uh, holding devices but I find this really useful especially if you're using something like a tree stump like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tilt the camera in a little bit just so you can see we've got all of these tool marks here and here, a few less here. Um, and what we're really going to be doing today is just smoothing out those tool marks. Now this, as I said, is a finishing gouge um, and it is specifically designed for this kind of work. You can use a normal gouge, it's just a little bit more difficult, takes a bit more time. Um, and what we're looking to do is where we have these lines uh, from the previous tool marks, we just want to be gently carving those out. Now, unlike the previous gouge that we used to get the, the depth in the bowl, you don't need to put loads and loads of pressure on. You just want to be nice and gentle. Still needs to have a little bit of force behind it. But basically, you're looking to remove the tool marks. Now, obviously, you are removing shavings, so you will be deepening this ever so slightly. Um, but really, this is just to smooth down all those sides and what you'll find, as I said last time, you'll, there'll be a ridge in the middle where the gouge kind of met at the bottom. Because we were using a straight gouge, um, this one is obviously slightly curved, the gouge would sort of stop roughly about here, um, and then when you came in from the other side, the same this way. Now, you can do this just by hand, and you can kind of either force your gouge through uh, with sort of a back and forth motion, or you can just kind of put a bit of extra pressure on and force it through. What I tend to do is I'll line my gouge up and I'll just take the back of my hand onto the, the, um, the butt end of the gouge handle and just give it a few little taps. Now what I should say is most um, woodworking gouges are not designed to be struck. and Most of them will come with a, uh, a sort of a sign or a note or something like that to tell you exactly that, you know, not designed to be struck. So this piece of wood, although it's a very nice handle, if I was to start hitting this with a mallet or a hammer, um, it would certainly start doing damage quite quickly. Um, but just using the heel of your hand, you can very quickly, apart from this particular knot that I'm working on, um, you can very quickly remove that ridge. Um, and that just allows you to then have a, a nice long continuous sweep from the side of the bowl. Now, this is going to take some time, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to record a little bit of footage of this, I won't bore you with the whole thing, um, I'll speed that up just for everybody's sanity, and then we'll come back when we've made a bit more progress. So here is our partly finished bowl. Um, hopefully you can see from here that it's a lot more even, um, you know, it's a lot more fluid looking. Um, and although there's still a lot of tool marks in here, the tool marks are a lot smaller than those that came before. Um, and that neatly moves us on to the next stage, which is essentially doing exactly what we've just done, but with a much lighter pressure. Um, so again, you look at some of these tool marks here, and all we're going to do is just very, very lightly taking off some very small, very, very thin shavings 
um, and just gradually smooth this down even further. Now there are some woodworkers out there um, who can completely finish a bowl by this method and have it so smooth it looks like it's been sanded. Um, now unfortunately I'm not one of those carvers, um, now call that a lack of skill or a lack of patience, whichever you like, um, but generally I like to try and finish my bowls as smooth as I can um, without spending hours and hours on them, um, because generally I will always give them a quick sand once I'm finished. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carry on working on this probably another 20 minutes or so maybe, possibly half an hour if I'm going to do both sides. Um, and again I won't bore you with all of this, you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing um, and I will come back when we've got a little bit more progress to show you. Right then guys, so we're done for the day. Um, I've finished down with the gouge um, and I've also just given it a very quick once over with some uh, coarse grit sandpaper. Although this is still green, um, you can use sandpaper on projects like this. Um, obviously you can't take it down for final sanding because there's still a lot of moisture in there, but it does just smooth things down that little bit more. Um, so this is the bowl as it stands right now, but obviously there's still a few more tool marks in there, um, which is always going to be the case, certainly with my carving. Um, but I think, um, hopefully you'll agree, that it's looking a lot smoother, um, and the thing with the tool marks that are currently in there is they're all very shallow, because we've progressed from using a sort of a fairly heavy gouge with a lot of pressure, down to a, a smoother gouge or a finer gouge, um, and we've gradually decreased the pressure that we've been using, uh, which means that the tool marks and the cuts that we're making are a lot shallower, uh, which means that once this is fully shaped and dried and I move over to sanding, it'll just be a lot easier to sand. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, sanding is one of the things I, I, I least enjoy doing when it comes to carving. Um, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment because I kind of insist on sanding all of my work. I just like that sanded finish. Um, but as this stands now, it, we're in really good shape for when it comes to do that. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm going to call it a day for today. I think next episode we'll move on to shaping um, the outer sides of the bowl. Um, and for that, we'll be using the axe. Um, but yeah, so I hope it was useful, guys. Uh, as always, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.